let's be honest, we all know that this car is going straight to the bottom of the Circuit Termolito leaderboard. But don't let that fool you. This Austin Mini Cooper is awesome to drive. Every two weeks, as part of the Circuit Thermolito leaderboard series, I'll be taking a different car as picked by the Kickstarter backers who made building the circuit possible and setting the best time I can in just 30 minutes. After that, it's your turn to beat my time, with the winner for each car taking their place on the official Circuit Thermolito leaderboard. And for part three of the series, we'll be driving the Austin Mini Cooper S FIA App K, which is a bit of a mouthful, as picked by Danny Bealsma. Uh, apologies again, Danny, if I've still not nailed the pronunciation of your second name there mate. Links are down in the video description for the car, the track and the 24-7 hot lap server hosted by Just Race. Let's have at it. Let's get some numbers out of the way nice and early in the video then shall we. This thing, 125 horsepower and it only weighs 620 kilos so in terms of pure power to weight ratio it's really not that bad at all and as I'm sure you probably just heard from the noise in the background, it's only got four gears, manual H pattern shifting, so if you try and shift it into fifth like I just did, it's not going to like that, it's not going to cooperate because that fifth gear doesn't actually exist. When you get a long enough straight, it can do 200 kilometers an hour, although there's not really any super long straights here at the, uh, Circuit Thermolito, so realistically you can only really stretch the legs on this thing up to about 165. But that doesn't mean it's not a fun car to drive in the slightest, like I said in the intro. It is an absolute joy in the corners. It really is. That's where this car comes alive. It is just planted. It sticks to the road. Even though there's not much to actually physically stick to the road. It's a tiny car. You really are low down, so the sense of speed in this thing is just... It's, it's really, really fast. I mean, it's not just a field of view thing. It is genuinely... It, because you're so close to the wall and so close to the ground, everything just moves around so quickly. It kind of feels like a like a go-kart almost. It's not bad at all for a 60-year-old car, let me let me say that. Now the actual mod itself comes highly recommended on race departments. It's made by a group called Petio Garage. And there's nothing but positive reviews, there's nothing but praise, and after driving this thing for a few laps, I can definitely see why. I mean, the attention to detail on the car interior and the exterior is just superb. And the audio, whew, audio is great. And obviously I'm not revving the nuts off it right now, and you can rev the nuts off it by the way. This thing likes an early upshift, you know, you don't really want to use those last few thousand revs because it doesn't really benefit you, the power kind of plateaus off a little bit really, so you want to shift around about six, 7,000 RPM, but yeah, the sound when you do get up in the revs is ooh, really nice. In fact, let me pop it down to second and give it some beans. And the, the wine as well. Transmission wine, wow! That's not a thing you come to expect from Assetto Corsa, if I'm being honest with you. Race room, Assetto Corsa Competizione, they're all renowned for being top of the class in terms of audio, but this thing, the people who put this, this audio pack together, top marks, really top marks, and that's coming from an audio engineer as well, so I, I kind of think I know what I'm talking about a little bit. Let's talk about the handling a little bit more, shall we? I did mention it was planted in the corners, and well, that is true to a certain extent. But you are going to be having this constant battle of lift-off oversteer and on-power understeer, purely because this is a front-wheel drive car, but it is very apparent in this Mini. On the approach to the corner, you come off the power, you get on the brakes, all the weight shifts to the front of the car, the rear goes light, and it starts sliding. Now, normally, in rear-wheel drive cars, you'd kind of counter that with a bit of opposite lock, maybe, and some throttle. Because this is front-wheel drive car, if you get on the throttle, the first thing that's going to do is then point your car towards the exit. It's going to plow on straight to the outside where the barriers are here at Thermally. So obviously not much runoff. Concrete and Armco everywhere you look on the outside. And that's not ideal. So you're constantly in this battle, like I said, between oversteer and understeer, trying to find that right transition point to get back on the throttle and line up your exits. 
you can just mash your right foot a bit and straighten the car up and have some amazing Jason Plato 60 degree sideways moments and, and actually save them and, and look like an absolute hero in the process as well but yeah it's it's definitely not the fastest way to go around the circuit and I suppose that's partly to do with the tires as well because these are old Dunlop treaded tires these aren't slicks these are all weather tires with tread blocks on them that are going to move around and going to generate heat which is good but at the same time you haven't got that ultimate contact patch that you do get with a fully slick tire it's definitely a case of initiating that drift and then maintaining it with the right foot throughout the mid corner and exit and you don't really want to get back on the power until you know it's going to stick it's going to take a bit of getting used to if you don't normally drive front wheel drive cars and because of the small tires as well it's quite susceptible to bouncing when you go over some larger curbs like that one's fine but if you get this red sausage it really throws the car up in the air because well it's a very small wheel, it's, it's not got much give, it kind of just goes bing! Nail it just right though and you will have some spectacular two wheel moments. But one thing you are going to want to be very careful of is braking. Now obviously old car, old tyres, old brakes and that is very apparent when you are trying to slow down for one of the several slow corners here at Circuit Thermalito. It's very prone to lockups, especially in the Hunter loop around the back end of the circuit where it goes light over the crest. Because you're asking a lot of the front tires, you got braking, turning, decelerating and then back on the power again. It's all done through the front tires. The, re the rears are just there as passengers basically. And the brake bias is something ridiculous like 88% to the front. You can't change it in the car setup, you can't change it on the fly. That's what you've got. You can change the brake pressure, which does help reducing it a bit with the lockups, but you you've still got that very front heavy brake balance. I personally I love it. I love this thing. It feels alive. It doesn't feel slow. And it's 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 a fantastic car to drive. It it really is. I love it. And I think you guys are gonna love it as well. So only 30 minutes to go and set my best time in this Austin Mini Cooper and see just how far down the leaderboard it really is. And if you guys want to watch that full and edited 30 minute run, then it is available to all DDF Racer channel members. Heading towards the line here at Circuit Thermalito for what is definitely going to be the slowest lap on the board so far. Pick a breaking point around about the 100 meter marker for the first corners, turns one and two, over the curbs at the Eagle Cart Junction, very, very nice. Not too far away from the barrier in the exit of turn two, but then put your foot down and use all the horsepower to get up the hill towards turn three, Davenport. Nice and gently in there, no signs of liftoff oversteer, but definitely on power understeer. Through the rainy curves, five and six. Oh, that's wide, but not into the Tech Pro, thankfully. The lap does continue along the top of Mokang Drive here. And now the real test of the liftoff oversteer into turn eight, elevation change, car goes light, big oppo, and then back on the throttle again to get that front stable and power through down the hill into the braking zone for the MJS's, throw it in left, rear left corner up over the curb and in the air, a bit of dust kicked up as well, on the exit just barely within track limits so that was so close to being an invalidated lap. Up into fourth gear, now for the hunter loop, watch out for the crest, oh big lock up, big lock up, big corrections but thankfully you can mash the right foot and get a bit of stability on exit although that is wide and that's probably going to cost a little bit of time all the way down the Abaddon straight now. Not really much you can do apart from just wait for the corner to turn up. And here we are. Avoid the curb on entry. A couple of stabs on, on turn in there at Binsbergen, which pushes wide for Jorensen. Not really using the curb on the inside, but definitely sniffing the barrier on the outside. Tip it in again to the exit through Chicane Mund and into Brody Bend. Very wide line there very wide line the on power on the steer is quite apparent in this mini at the moment breaking to the power loop oh a bit of a lockup again very tight corner and pushing wide once more all the way to the concrete on the outside short run up the hill to the Nauman Herpin again one of the slowest corners on the track here lots of steering lock over the curb on the inside 
and then try and straight line it through the S's here as much as possible. Henrik 1, Henrik 2, into Naptic and Fielders. Plenty of room there, not hassling the curbs or the concrete wall on the outside at all. Into Bergen Bend, the last real breaking point of the lap. Hopping over the inside curb there, two wheels up and over the AstroTurf, through the rangy kink and back towards the start finish line. Felt very busy, not much time to get the words in today. <laughs> time to see what kind of lap we've got on the board. Since the previous video in the Mercedes, Matt Webb has rather predictably gone and absolutely smashed the lap time on the board, putting in a 2 minute 1.553, which actually puts the Mercedes up to the top of the board ahead of the Radical. As for the Mini, however, at the bottom of the board, that managed it in 2 minutes 36.350 seconds, which is actually a lot better than I thought it would do, to be honest. I was fully expecting to see something a lot closer to the 3 minute mark, so that's actually not bad. The thing is, though, historically, front wheel drive's not exactly been my strongest point, so I'm expecting to see a few of you guys go a lot faster than that. I mean, front wheel drive, four gears, old school car, H-pattern gearbox. If ever anything had Tobias's name all over it, I think it's this. You've got until this time to go and set a lap, and all of the links you need for the car, the track, the official hot lap server hosted by Just Race, and my Discord server, they're all down in the video description. I'm predicting a sub 2 minute 35 or better, so go and prove me right.